Today I want to introduce you to something new at Bonnie Doon Fuse Glass Tools. It is a very fun tool that I think you guys are going to love. I'm going to hold it up against a piece of black glass here just so you can see it clearly. This is Ziggy. This is a stainless steel form that you are going to be able to put across all of your pattern bars and your triangle pattern bars in a way that your glass will flow down into the bars and make the fabulous looks that you've been seeing us do in the last few months. This has been testing for a while. This is stainless steel. It is not rod. We have tested many kinds of rod and never found any that could go to our 1680 degrees and not spall. I hate spalling. So we have come up with this, which is a continuous piece at both ends. We bend them very carefully and I'll show you how this is going to work. So first I'm going to show it to you on a triangle bar former and what I'm going to do is to take a piece of eighth inch fiber paper which is necessary for a high fire triangle bar former. I'm going to fold it in half and this piece is cut about five and a half inches wide. The sides on our triangle bar formers are two and a half inches on either side, but I give it an extra quarter inch on both sides with this process. So it is about a three eighths of an inch longer than the form and about a half an inch wider. And the reason I make it longer is so that when you put it down in the form, you are going to, excuse me, you are going to take your triangles that go in the end, which are also eighth inch paper. You're going to put it in the ends like that. And then you're going to take your eighth inch centerpiece, which is a little bit too long for the former. And you are going to very gently, so that you don't tear the paper, get it in the center, work your hand out to the end, and pretty much smash it in at the end till it folds over the triangle bar former. Let me try to show you how that kind of folded in there. And I'm going to smash it down as much as I can. And this makes a seal so that at 1680 degrees you don't have any leaking. We've tried it all different ways and at that temperature with the way this glass is going to move you are going to want to have it completely sealed and shelf paper will not do it for you. So I'm going to force this in on the other end until it is completely in the former. If there's any little particles, get them out. The next thing I would do is to spray the whole inside of this with MR97. The reason I do that is so that when your glass is coming into the form and slides down, it'll slide easily and you'll have less spiking and less cold working. So here's your former. It's nice and tucked in. It's all sealed. Then you are going to take Ziggy, which is what we've decided to call our new pattern bar former. You're going to put it on kiln stilts at either end of your form and in a minute I will show you how to load it up. Okay, so we're going to continue. I now have my 1 8 inch fiber paper on my former the way I showed you. It's all sprayed with MR97. There's no need to let it dry because it's going to dry plenty in that kiln and uh, if I was forming a solid glass pattern bar, I would dry it first. But in this, it's going to be dripping into it. It'll have lots of time to dry. So the pattern bars that you have seen me make, let's see if I can show you this. Here's a real pretty one. In fact, here is the matched pair set. Let me try to zoom that in so you could see it. 
You'll notice that the peak is yellow on these. What I like to do is to put some glass down in the peak of the former. In this case, I'm using a jar for it just to make it quick and easy. Most of the time I use scrap. I crunch it up with a hammer and use it in here. That gives me a nice peak design accentuated color at the top of these pattern bars which I really like. Then I'm going to put our new former Ziggy on top of the stilts. Now think about this as being set up in the kiln and I'm going to look down on it to make sure that the glass is going to fall into the former. And this is one reason why I put a little bit of extra eighth inch fiber paper on the edges so that there's plenty of room for the glass. These pieces of glass that I'm using on this are all 96 and I have cut these to be 3 inches wide by 12 inches long for this particular former which is 14 inches long. So the glass is shorter than the former. I am going to line them up right on top of Ziggy, looking down to make sure that it's centered. You don't want to make it as long as the former. You don't want to make it as wide as the paper. You want it to be in farther so when it melts down there's plenty of room for the glass to flow. So now I'm going to start thinking about color choices and how I want the, um, the bar to evolve. I use a lot of white so that there's lightness in the bar. I don't want it all to be too dark. So I've already cut all these to make this video a lot shorter. I'm going to put that on there. And then, as some of you know, who have taken my classes, I like to use just little bits of dark. So instead of putting a whole dark sheet, I'm just going to put a couple of strips of black and that will give an accent without dominating the melt. I'll put another piece of white. Let's throw some of this, not sure what this is called, it's not quite sea foam, um, but this is a spectrum. If you have scraps, put them together in the length of the piece that you want, which in this case is 12 inches. Works great. Wouldn't you know my phone would ring right now? And put another piece of red on there. And I think I will put another piece of white. This one I didn't have quite three inches, but no matter, put it on there. As long as it balances, it's all good. I happen to have a couple thin strips, tricks, strips of yellow, so I'm going to put that on there. They can overlap. You can put auto mounts. As long as it sits flat on Ziggy, you're good to go. So let's put another one of these. And you can make yourself quite a stack. And we will be putting weights so that you can weight your uh, glass strips. Here's another one where I didn't have a 12 inch, so I'm going to put two pieces together like that. And I think I'm going to top this off with one more section of white. This one even has some marker on it, which I'm going to ignore. And a couple of strips of Kind of a bright orange red from Euroboros. It's a 96. So there you go. So this is going to be my stack. It's quite a stack. But you can see there's quite a bit of volume in here. Not only is it going to go down in, but it's going to spread out. So you are going to have enough room in your form. Um, and look at the kind of colors you're going to get. So I am going to load this in the kiln. Um, I kind of like building these on the table because I can see what I'm doing, but then you have to move it. So in order to move it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this stack that I've just created 
I'm going to put it down on the table and then I'm going to go and put this in the kiln, put the stack back on, make sure everything is lined up perfectly and then I will be putting the uh, schedule in the kiln. For this project, um, I will fire it fairly slowly because this is such a massive amount of glass to get through. So I'm actually going to take this up at 100 degrees an hour up to 800 and then I'm going to go uh, 250 to about 1450 and then as fast as I can up to 1680 and hold it for three hours and let it really drip and really get in there nice and solid. When I use that schedule, I don't have any air bubbles. They slice clean and I cannot question the quality of the pieces that I'm getting. I am glad to be able to share this with you. I've struggled through many tests to make sure that I could give you a product that's going to be successful for you. The nice thing is that these are going to fit on all of the pattern bars that you have already purchased from us over the years. This will fit on your rectangle pattern bar. Um, we are going to make them in a size to fit 8 inch, 10 inch, 12 inch, and 14 inch. Um, and they're just the right size. And they will also fit all of your triangle bar formers in the different sizes. So you don't necessarily need to buy more formers if you already have them you're just going to want to get Ziggy to uh, facilitate your doing this process. Remember you you can use rod for something like this stainless steel rod which is quite expensive um, I don't like it for a few reasons one is it can roll as the glass melts uh, it, can, it always spalls so unless you take it up to a very low temperature and drip it forever, you're going to have a lot of spalling. So I hope that this comes up uh, at a perfect time in your pattern bar forming and it creates a lot of success for you. So I'll take another quick shot after I've loaded the kiln and then we'll go from there. Thanks.